Hey guys, it's Kelsey, your best friend on the homestead from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com. Today I'm gonna to show you a really easy recipe for rhubarb cordial, AKA a rhubarb simple syrup. Now I really like this recipe because it's very versatile. Since it is a cordial, it doesn't actually have any alcohol in it, so you can use this for making a mocktail, just like a sparkling rhubarb beverage for your kids. You can also, of course, add a little bit of hooch to it and make an alcoholic drink. You can cook it down longer and turn it into a syrup for your pancakes. You can mix it into ice cream and make a rhubarb shake. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. So let's dive into how you can make your own. So first things first, let's talk about harvesting rhubarb. So at the time I'm recording this video, it is in June, and there's a lot of misconceptions about rhubarb and when you can harvest it and how long you can harvest it for. So let's talk about that. So you can actually harvest rhubarb all summer long. It is not going to poison you. <laughs> so <clears throat> rhubarb leaves do have something in it called oxalic acid. And so you don't wanna eat the leaves because it's in them in a fairly high quantity and it can make you sick or can make animals sick as well. Actually, interestingly, rabbits shouldn't have things like kale and uh, of course rhubarb leaves and other dark leafy greens because the amount of oxalic acid in it is, is actually toxic to rabbits. Um, anyway, so that's kind of a side tangent. <laughs> but, uh, but so with the rhubarb, you can eat the stalks all year long. The acid does not travel down into the stalks or anything like that as the summer goes on. The reason why you really want to do most of your rhubarb harvesting early in the, the spring, maybe late spring, and then kind of taper it off towards maybe the end of June, at least for us where we live up here in Minnesota, you want to taper it off around June because the plant needs a long time to recover. So if you want to harvest a couple of rhubarb stalks throughout the summer, that's fine to make pie or uh, you know make a little batch of cordial or something, but you don't want to do like heavy harvesting of the plant. So if you want to harvest a bunch of rhubarb in the spring, uh, you know, through early spring, late spring and freeze it and save it for later, that's an awesome time to do it. But you can, if you want to still harvest from the plant, but just limit it to taking maybe three, four stalks or something from the plant and then giving it a long recovery time because it needs that recovery to kind of, you know, have energy stores and reserves for the winter ahead. So just don't stress your plants out, harvest mostly early to mid late spring, and then kind of let your plant relax. A couple stalks here and there is fine. Okay. So when you harvest from a rhubarb plant, the best thing to do is actually to pull the stalk out and not to cut it with a knife. When you're cutting it with a knife, there's a couple issues there. One is that if your knife isn't clean, you can be introducing pathogens from other plants to the rhubarb plant, which is no good. And also when you cut it, you're just leaving basically a big open wound on it that allows for uh, more damage to come versus when you pull it from the base of the stalk, it really comes out nice and clean. You're not leaving like a big gaping wound for things to get in and it's kind of down below the soil surface and stuff. So much better to pull than to cut. So very simply, you reach down to the base of the plant, pull out your rhubarb, and then uh, you know snap the, the leaf off and then discard that. I wouldn't, uh, I would toss that in my compost. I wouldn't like use it as a mulch or something like that just because I don't wanna be introducing a lot of that. I don't think it'd be a huge issue as it breaks down, but just to be on the safe side, I would just toss it in the compost pile and not use it like directly as a mulch. As tempting as it may be, because those things are whoppers. <laughs> Okay, so now let's head into the kitchen for our recipe here. So I didn't show you how I chop up a rhubarb stock, but I typically, you know, you're gonna wanna wash it up. And then I like to kind of slice it the long way. So then you've got kind of these almost like rhubarb little ribbons. And then I chop that up. I think that's maybe the fastest way to get, to get what you're looking for here. So once you have washed, kind of trimmed any dirty stuff off your rhubarb and gotten down to a nice little chopped amount here, you wanna have four cups of chopped prepped rhubarb. It depends on how big your stocks are. You know, if you get those really big stocks, you might only need two stocks. If you've got, you know, kind of thinner ones, then you might need six or seven. It really depends on the size of your rhubarb as to how many you're gonna need for the recipe. But what you want is four chopped cups of rhubarb. Next thing we are gonna do is to a stock pot. We are going to add one and one fourth cup of sugar and one and a half cups of water. And then we're gonna set that to a low gentle kind of simmer. You wanna stir this pretty regularly because you don't want that sugar to scorch or anything. You just wanna incorporate it so that it's fully dissolved in the water. And once that has happened, you can go ahead and add in your rhubarb and leave it again on kind of a low simmer. And we're gonna do this until the rhubarb starts to break down. For me, this took I don't know, probably about 20 minutes or so. It took longer than you kind of think it, that it's gonna take. So you want that rhubarb to be kind of mushy when you're, when you're done with it. 
After you have reached the mushy rhubarb state, you know, make sure you're stirring as you're cooking along this cordial here, then it's time to strain it. So I just use a fine mesh strainer. You can also use, if you have some cheesecloth around, that's great. And I'm not too concerned about there being little floaty bits so I didn't you know, double up with the cheesecloth or anything. I just strained it directly into a bowl. And I like using a bowl like this one that I have, this Pyrex one is really nice. It has the handles kind of double as pour spouts, which is really slick. But otherwise, if you don't have that, you might want to have a ladle on hand to make the next steps here easier. So once you have it in your bowl, you want to discard the, that rhubarb mush. And here's the thing, that mush is actually pretty tasty. It's just sugary, yummy rhubarb stuff. So I actually just threw it into a muffin recipe. You could also, you know, kind of use it almost like a jam or a jelly and spread it on stuff. Uh, you could, again, add it into recipes. You can just eat it with your fingers <laughs> or you can give it to your chickens as a nice treat if you have chickens. So I would say don't just throw that away, use it for something because someone really will want to eat that yummy tart sweet rhubarb mush. Next thing we want to do is just allow our cordial to cool to room temperature and once it is cooled down we are going to store it in a nice clean bottle. I have this cute little maple syrup bottle left over that I took out of the recycling because I thought it would be perfect for this for this little project and just cleaned it really well. And then this will store in the fridge for about a month. You can also just store it in a mason jar if you want to. So, and then here I made some really sweet little drinks for my girls. I just added some about halfway, I'd say. I ended up adding a little bit more of the cordial and then some sparkling water on top and mixed it up. And it was a delicious little summer treat for them. So some other things you might want to do if you want to kind of spruce this recipe up a little bit. When you add the rhubarb to the dissolved sugar water, uh, you can add some lemon juice or orange juice. You can also add a little bit of lemon zest or orange zest in there. Uh, also some peeled ginger. Those are some options you can kind of play with a little bit of the flavor. I really like just a straight up rhubarb. I think is delicious. Oh, another option too that I haven't tried, but I have read other people have done where you um, split a vanilla bean and add that to it. I, I'm kind of stingy with my vanilla beans because <laughs> they're expensive. So I haven't done that, but I think that would probably add a really nice depth of flavor to this recipe as well. Uh, one last thing I'll say is if you want to sweeten this with honey, absolutely, you certainly can. What I would do then is instead of adding the sugar to the water is I would just put the rhubarb in the water and cook it in there uh, until it's all mushy, same kind of process. Strain that out and then add honey to the warm strained liquid because you don't want to be kind of simmering and boiling your honey for that long sort of time especially if you want it's raw honey and you want to keep kind of those raw benefits is I would just add it to the warm strained rhubarb liquid instead with the sugar reason why we have to do it earlier is because we need it to to kind of simmer and break down so that it all kind of you know homogenizes in there so you can definitely do honey as well super simple super delicious let me know if you have any ideas or any other of your favorite rhubarb recipes below I'll also link below to some of my favorite rhubarb recipes on the blog. I have a delicious rhubarb bar recipe. There's way too much sugar in it, but it's really good <laughs> if you're looking for a good rhubarb bar. And also to my family's absolute favorite way to eat rhubarb, which is a rhubarb custard cake. Again, it's really easy and really delicious. So make sure you check those out. Also, here's some other great videos up here about some fun spring recipes you can do uh, and some more information on like garlic scapes and other things like that. Some other fun spring things you might be getting into in the garden. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you here next week for more farming, family food, and fortitude at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.